Hi, my name is Harun Janelli and I'm the person behind Synergy Files channel. I'm bringing for you a new format of videos in which I'll attempt to answer the most frequently asked questions on this channel. Now I do cover these questions in my detailed videos which I release almost monthly, but in this new format I'll answer them briefly and I'll be doing that face to face. If the format clicks then I'll bring for you more of such videos and even attempt to go live. So without further ado, let's start the question and answer session. Now the first question that I get, and I do get this a lot, is what is the minimum cost of investment required to set up a solar energy system? Now bear in mind that there are two different types of solar energy systems. One is a DC system and one is an AC system. We'll talk about the DC first. In a DC system, you can get them for as low as $100 to $150 and what you get with the kit is uh, something like the solar panel, the connecting wires, a couple of LED bulbs, maybe a pedestal or a table fan and you might even get a small battery and a charge controller to go with that. These systems are in many countries subsidized so instead of paying $100 to $150 you might even be paying lower something lower than that but these systems do not feed in energy to your home grid for that we require the solar ac systems which we are going to talk about now so with the solar ac system you can feed electricity in your home microgrid for 300 dollars you can get a solar panel which is 300 watts and also you can get a micro inverter you don't need to go for a full-blown large inverter. You can do with a micro inverter, which will easily manage a single panel of 300 watts. And that micro inverter might cost you somewhere between 70 to $150, whereas the panel would cost you somewhere around 150 to $250. So on a budget, which is 300 watts, you can have a solar AC system that feeds into your home microgrid. Now bear in mind that if you go for a budget system, your panel would probably be resting against a wall. It won't be mounted on the roof because for roof mounted system, you need to have a trained technician and bringing a trained technician to install that would cost you a bit more. However, if your roof is flat, then you can do the installation yourself. You can get a mounting frame, which are quite easily available for $20 and sometimes even less and you can do the installation. Note that in some countries you need planning permission and you have to bring in a trained technician to install the solar panels. It's compulsory. So check what are the conditions for your local area. Having said that, uh, I would also like to point out that with a 300 watt system you won't see the full benefits of solar PV electricity systems that you normally see. You will get more benefits if you go for a larger system and you would also incorporate uh, energy storage system with that. So when you install somewhere around one kilowatt or higher, then you see the real benefits and then you see the notable reduction in your energy bills. You can get some great deals on solar panels depending upon the season and the locality. I've made a video on how to procure solar panels on a budget and you can check that out in the link given above. But bear in mind that solar panels are not the only item on the list. You also have to buy an inverter. For budget systems, you don't need to buy a full scale inverter. You can do with micro inverters. Micro inverters are the cheapest option and for that I've made a video if you need more details please check that out in the link above. Last thing that you need to factor in is the installation cost. Now because you need to bring in a trained technician for installation it can cost you somewhere uh, between 100 200 to sometimes more than a thousand dollars depending upon your locality and what you negotiate with your installer. So please do factor that cost in before you decide to go for uh, installing a solar electricity system. 
The second question, and I get this a lot, is what type of panels should we go for? Should we go for monocrystalline, polycrystalline or thin film? Now, if only I got a penny each time I got asked this question, I would be a rich man. It entirely depends upon your utility. For me, the default choice is polycrystalline. Why? Because polycrystalline are the most value for money. 60% panels in the market are polycrystalline. Their baseline efficiency is not as high as monocrystalline, but they are quite cheap compared to monocrystalline. Now, as I mentioned before, it depends entirely upon your utility uh, that what panels you will go for. For instance, if I were living in a hot climate country, I would prefer choosing thin film panels above the other two panels. Why? Because the efficiency of thin film panels doesn't degrade at all or degrades very slowly as the temperature goes up. On the other hand, if let's say I was living in a cold climate country and I had a very limited roof space, uh, I would prefer going for monocrystalline panels because that would give me the most amount of electricity for my limited uh, system. So as I mentioned before, it entirely depends upon uh, what conditions you have and then you select your panels based on that. So I hope that answers that. My default option is polycrystalline. Another question I get asked a lot is should we go for a wind turbine or should we go for solar panels? Now, before I answer this question, again, look at your weather conditions. Are you living in an area which is dominated by low pressure? Do you get windy condition for most of the time during the year? Do you get a lot of cloud cover? Do you get a lot of rain? Uh, and is your wind velocity over five meter per second at an altitude of 10 meters? If the answer is yes, then definitely wind turbine is a good consideration. And also the benefit of wind turbine really adds up as you go large scale. But by default, my option would be solar in most cases. Why most of the population lives uh, near the sun belt, is on the sun belt. So by default, nearly every population center uh, receives enough solar radiation to make it viable and on domestic scale on a very small scale because the beauty of solar is you can go at a very low scale to a very large scale but at smaller scale you don't have a wind turbine system that has a comparable output as mentioned before the benefit of wind turbine is really in systems that are 5 kilowatts 10 kilowatts 15 kilowatts and above for smaller systems, which are 1 kilowatt, 2 kilowatt, 3 kilowatt, solar is the default option. There's another reason to that, which is that solar is a completely solid state system. There are no moving parts. Whereas in wind turbines, uh, there are moving parts. And as a mechanical engineer, I know that the reliability of a system goes down, the more moving parts it has. So in a wind turbine, you need to look after the bearings. You need to look at the loads. You need to look at the shearing of the blades. You need to take care of the vibration. And you don't need that uh, to handle all of that in a solar panel. And that's why by default, my option to go for is a solar system, especially for regions which are dominated by high pressure. So there you go. This was my first attempt at a Q&A format in which I try to answer the three most commonly asked questions on this channel. If you have a question of your own, do type it in the comment section. I'll hopefully pick it up and try to answer that in my future video. If you learned something from this video, please do hit the like button. Thank you for your attention.